What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted, and I am so pumped for this guest. This is actually a long time coming. I've been wanting this guy on the podcast for a while. I've seen him on Instagram. We finally got to link up. We've got my man Jabari, aka Boost Collective, on the show. Jabari, how are you today? Man, I woke up this morning. I had some eggs, did my meditation, and I was like, hmm. Something's definitely, I have a feeling from the beginning of my insides, today's going to be a good day, and I wasn't exactly sure what it was. And finally, when I got that message, are you ready for the Zoom call? Like fireworks, my entire day went amazing. So that's how I'm feeling right now, Lizzie. Bro, I love your, <laughs> I love your energy. Like you and me, this, this is it. Like this is my type of thing. Like Pick meditating, up. waking up, positive energy. Like that's me, bro. I love that. I love that too, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. It's though I am the face, you can say, of Boost Collective, there's actually three of us, which okay. we're going to get more into as this amazing podcast progresses. I love it. I'm excited. Well, let's start. Just tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and how you like got into this whole music thing. Okay. So this is going to be extremely, you know, you put the cup down. I don't want you to spit out because it's going to be extremely underwhelming <laughs> compared to your other guests. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people, they have different cool stories. Like their grandfather bought them a keyboard when they were like two years old and learned how to like play with their toes. And then some other guy, they found like a, <laughs> from a garage sale. And it's like very like dynamic and there's a good story to hide behind it. Mine is boring. There's not very much to it. Okay. It was like this. Do you remember years ago, Epic Rap Battles of History on YouTube? Yes, I do remember that. Welcome to Epic Web of History. <laughs> so I used to go to my friend's house all the time and we used to watch those hours upon hours. Like I remember their mom was getting sick of it. And it, 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 we used to watch it so many times. My friend's mom was saying Epic Web of History and watching it with us. Oh, wow. And so we thought to ourselves, this doesn't seem that difficult. Why don't we make our own? And so my old neighbor at the time, his name was Brandon. Brandon and I, we were cooking up in the studio. And by studio, I mean the Windows XP computer that my dad just let us use at the time. <laughs> hey. We used to uh, record on this. It was this, it was literally some virtual assistant type of like, you know, mic setup. Right. And so I remember it had really bad mic, horrible. It would peak every second. So like, welcome to Epic. <laughs> but, I learned a little bit at the time and you know, we had garage band cause my dad also had a Mac OS X. So we got to play around. And so we just made raps 24 seven. It was like, you know, we went Luigi versus like, um, you know, a snake from metal gear. It was, we played super smash bros and everything, oh, cool. but all those videos, all those footage, all those songs deleted off the face of the web because one day I was in my emo phase and I was like, you know what? Forget this. This is not good. Beep. Removed it all. And I'm still looking for traces of it. You, like you can see some raps and stuff back in the day, but not really. Uh -huh. And so as a progress, I used to do rap battles throughout high school, you know, like back of the bus type things, you know, all the kids going crazy. And then as things got even more, I realized maybe I don't want to do rap. Maybe I want to do design. Mm. And so I want to do other design stuff. And so I kind of veered away from music. But simultaneously, Damien and Ronan, which are the other members of Boost Collective, these guys are like, Damien's, he's Romanian. And so he's an immigrant from Romania. And if you know a little thing or two about European music, it's very, very upbeat. It's like, oops, oops, oops. house music, techno. It's the way, even today, like, have you heard any recent uh, music like uh, from European style music? Not, I mean, I have, but not really, like not a lot. I'm not that familiar with it. Oh no, because I noticed it's weird because the producer community is like two primary types. There's like the American producers, they have a distinct style than the non-Americans. Like, you know, a lot from uh, India, Croatia, Albania, they, they are still in kind of like the dubstep techno type of sphere. And so Damien, he kind of grew up listening to that sort of music. Gotcha. And Ronan, same thing. So mm -hmm. as they were making, they're, you know, doing their little uh, shows and everything. And they finally, it was Ronan's idea to do something crazy. He was younger. He's like, this is like Cymatics during the beginning of Cymatics, basically. Ronan was one of like the first fans. He's like, they can do it, I can do it. So then Ronan started it, and then Damon got on board, and then later I got on board again. And so that's the story of Boost Collective. Which, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, dude, okay, so, so, okay, this is awesome because like, 
when I watch your videos on Instagram, like any videos, like they're, they have this sense of humor to them. Obviously they're like funny. And at first I was like, oh, okay, he's trying to do some funny stuff, but like you actually are just naturally pretty funny. Like you are, that's who you are. Like you're an entertainer. <laughs> that's what's hilarious. It's funny. Cause like you've added this, you know, entertainment aspect to something that might not be considered that entertaining marketing and mar marketing school, like for people who are marketing nerds, like you and me, but right. for anybody else, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. And so it's kind of funny because the marketing stuff has like, um, there's like sketchiness to it a little, you know, how there's like fake promo and like scammers and stuff. <laughs> but what's cool is like, because of your Instagram, because you put your face and because you do all this, like really funny stuff, it, I don't know if you know it, but it makes you look more legit, even though it's like, doesn't seem like it would it does i look at you and i'm like this guy must know he must be a legitimate person if he's willing to put himself out there that much to where he's making funny videos so i'm like okay maybe he does know what he's talking about with marketing i don't know why it works that way it just <laughs> it makes me trust you that's exactly what it is it makes me trust you because i know you more you know what i mean well, thank you. Let's just hope in my next video, I don't accidentally pull the skeletons out of my closet and, you know, destroy all the momentum I've been building. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. So, okay, let's talk. What's that? I said I can say the same thing about you. When I saw Lizzie the Gifted, I, I'll be completely honest. Please take this however you want. Yeah. And just notes all love coming from Boost Collective and Jabari. I thought it was like a Kanye West fan page. Oh. I saw Yeezy, so I thought Yeezy. And he's my favorite artist. So I'm like, follow. It doesn't matter. Boost account, my account, whichever account I'm signed in, follow. And then I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't Kanye. False advertising. How could you? <laughs> but then I stayed because the content was freaking amazing. It was amazing. And that, like when I first saw you, I find it's really weird because in the music industry, you have producers, you have artists, and you have this weird kind of in the middle type of dudes, right. which they're producers, they're artists, they're designers, they kind of wear a bunch of different hats, you know? Like if they invested in some hat corporation, I wouldn't be surprised considering how differently they switch it up. And you yeah, have right. a circuiter of that man. Yeah, no, thank you. I, that's really funny. I love that you just told me that. Um, and no, I don't take it the wrong way. I think that's great. A follower is a follower. And look where we are now. Now we're chatting and we're boys. So it's, you know, however it works, it works. So yeah, I mean, um, Talk to me a little bit about Boost Collective. Like, what do you guys, you know, I kind of know a little bit about what you do, but just for people who don't know, and I would like to learn more about it. So what do you guys, what do you guys do? Okay. We sell premium courses for underwater basket weaving. <laughs> no, come on, quit playing. <laughs> you playing around. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish we'd, maybe. Uh, at maybe at first I was like, oh, okay, courses for marketing for da, da, da. And you're like, underwater basket weaving. Okay, yeah, right. Weaving. I want to learn about some damn basket weaving. Man, so do I. You know, you should do it. You and I. <laughs> the Lizzie and Jabari Basket Weaving Podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. No. This, is not, this is the most fun interview I've ever done, man. This is the most mm. Man, I'm having time of my life. Just like, I mean, it's pretty cool because I just really like your shirt. And you, <laughs> Thank you. you have so much stuff going on. So every, like, five seconds, I just kind of fixate on a different item. Bro, I'm it. Yeah, so, like usually i like the background to be the um the black uh blackout shades but i was like man i'm gonna use the desktop i got this new desktop so i'm like using this desktop and i can't like really turn it around i was like oh it's all good i got the piano couch you know we use the couch to chill while we do work in the studio i was like it's fine it's all good but I uh you, right? i don't know I why do i wanted to wear this shirt i figured you'd be a dog person i don't know why well i figure you're wrong i'm a cat man oh you're a cat man okay <laughs> Man. Bro, that's, that's cool too. I love cats, man. It's all good. Uh, Even worse, I could have been like a, you know, turtle person or something. Turtles are cool. <laughs> yeah, right. Turtles were cool too, though. Like, no, hey. Okay. But Boost Collective, though, like, what do you guys actually do? Not underwater basket weaving. What do you guys actually do? Okay. So, aside from that, it's weird because it's kind of transmorphing because I'm everybody that's kind of worked at a company that started from zero to one kind of has knows exactly what I'm talking about. It does a lot of evolutionary periods. And so at the time where we have a vision where we want to be and we're trying to get there. So let me just, you know, give you a trip down memory lane, assuming if you've been there since day one yeah. of how we got here and what we've done. So we started off 
on SoundCloud, grew a big account. And then we were like, all right, well, it was Ronan's idea. He was like, well, we have a bunch of audience. How about if people can get reposts and they pay us? And then Damien was like, amazing idea. Let's do it. We did that. And then as we kind of ventured forwards, we saw kind of like a little trend, you know, we saw, hmm, there's XXS Tentacion, Smoke Perk, whoever, a little Uzi, all these guys, the independent artist scene is growing. So like a very good farmer, we wanted to plant the seed and then watch it come uproot. So we started doing independent uh, campaigns to put people's music from their computer file, you know, with all the cobwebs and not being touched onto a big stream platform where they could finally make moolah. Right. But that was hard. I'll be honest, this kid was kicking our ass 24-7, 365. So we're like- Why? What do you mean by that? Like, why, what were they doing? So what was happening is in order for us to be profitable or to even operate, we need to have it on a pay per release basis, which is cool at the time. But then DistroKid, they made it so that you can get a, a subscription where you pay one time and you can put as many songs as you can. Oh, I got and it. So after that, DistroKid sales went up and ours inversely went down. What were you using? So you were using like, what were you using? We're using, okay, yeah. Oh, cool. now we're getting into the internals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to. I like going to be pissed when I say this. But so uh, what we did is, you know how distribution works. You host it somewhere, then you have your RSS feed. You put it somewhere else, similar to podcasting. Right. So if we had a friend and they built one of those, and then we used that one, it's it's very you know cut and dry. Like the actual internals of how Boost Collective works is very boring. It's not as fun as a lot of people think it is. Well, I would probably like it though. Like I'm into that stuff. That's because you're a nerd, bro. Yeah, I know. A little bit. <laughs> you're like, wait, what? Well, RSS feed, how's it hosted? How much storage? Is, is it cloud-based? Is it server-based? I know you'd enjoy it, but right. for the sake of your audience, let's- Yeah, the, they won't. No, they don't want to hear that. Right. For you guys, basically what we did is we found a way to have our own little distribution channel. And then so we used that. And then as things kind of went forwards, I was even part of Boost Collective at the time. I was like, you know, I knew what was going on, but it was like, I was, I tried to do real estate. I, I, I tried to sell insurance. I was like freaking the man of many dreams and no yeah. concrete plan, you know, yeah. hustlers can all relate to this. I, I, I did that same thing. Like, like last year I had a social media agency where I was helping local businesses with their paid ads and coaching them. And I did like dabbled in affiliate marketing, dabbled it with a Shopify drop shipping store. Like i then eventually I was like, okay, I'm just going to go all in with the music. This is what I need to do. But so you, so I get what I relate with what you're talking it was, about. It was fun. What's that? It was fun though, right? Yo, dude. Uh, no, no, it was not fun. Actually. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I mean, it was hard. Like I, the, the social media thing was actually pretty cool. It was fun when I was making money. That was, that was kind of nice. But then, um, yeah, I mean, the, when the pand, all my clients were local. And like when I hit the, when the pandemic hit, they all closed for just like yeah. two weeks. If I had just wrote it out for two weeks or three weeks, they probably all would have taken me back, but they all shut down. Like all my money was basically gone. And I was like, damn, dude, maybe I should just go into the music. And I did. And uh, since then, they've opened back up, but it took them a couple of like my clients took them like a month and a half, two months to open. But yeah, so it was, it, it was a fun journey. What was really fun was learning, like all the learning about digital marketing that I got from all three of those Shopify, that whole drop shipping world, you're learning e-commerce and affiliate marketing. You're learning all about like paid ads and email marketing and then social media marketing. You're really starting to learn about the whole 360 degree view of marketing and paid ads, obviously. And you got to kind of know about email and sales because you got to sell yourself. So that was the stuff. Like I just enjoyed all of that, like learning and stuff. Um, but the music, you know, that's really what I'm into that whole world and stuff like that. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So at, at some point you said you had a social media marketing agency. So you were, uh, like Ty Lopez, did you like to see his 67 step course? And well, I, I watched his, uh, his social media marketing course a few years, a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I watched that and then I had watched another course too. And, and that's kind of what got me. Um, he, he was the one who I, I who had planted the seed first. I like Ty Lopez. Are you, you a fan look of his? Like Ty Lopez, in a way. I look like him. Like like a Jewish Ty Lopez with a pompadour <laughs> type of vibe. <laughs> you know, you are so freaking, bro. You are. I got. I got to get some glasses, then I'll really look like him. Yeah, yeah. Here in my uh, room, brand new desktop setup. Oh, but you know what's more important than a desktop? Knowledge. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh my god that's amazing man i'm actually happy that you kind of recentered because i know it's painful like the, the whole reshuffling trying to find your thing it's not fun it's not fun no it's very confusing and weird time yeah it's and not I mean, cool that's kind of like what gave the inspiration for us to go into what we're doing now it's mm. imagine a crm but for music artists and the okay. better part is instead of you just managing your analytics and checking sure like okay email marketing good perfect uh shopify playlist perfect um social media posts it's like kind of like there are steps that you need to do in order to find success but a lot of there's like a learning curve to almost everything mm -hmm. even underwater basket weaving is going to take some learning curve and that's not worth a damn so right. imagine things that are actually worth something right. that's why now we're trying to be the one-stop shop you know air quotes air quotes because in two years i don't know if that's what we're still going to be doing right of music artists so they can come in through the boots collective membership select what you want you know I got my trusty mouse right. oh what you guys are gonna help me create social media posts select it and then they're good and the cool thing is the costs are extremely low and by low i mean free you know if you're a lazy the gifted fan then you can get in boost collective with uh for free we have a special plan uh, wait okay hold on hold on hold on i'm on the website i was gonna check but what are you talking about for free for free yeah, yeah we so what we're doing is uh, to give you like a very abstract approach without getting too boring and convoluted in the numbers, we realized, so we have a bunch of people coming, but people don't really understand what's, what our membership, how it works and whatever, because it's, I mean, relatively different from most music, uh, softwares. Right. And so what we did is we open up a free version in which you can go with, it's more like freemium. You can say that's our model. Freemium. Okay, cool. So, that, okay, good. I was going to say, so if you're just, okay, keep going. You can go in and test it all. And then what you can do is you can upgrade on the amount of tasks that you want in your plan. And since the tasks are such high quality, I would know because I make it, <laughs> then you're definitely going to want to get the upgrade. And so that's the current model of B plus boost collective. Okay. I'm like, cause I'm on the website right now. I mean, the, okay. Hold on, dude. This is actually pretty legit. Like I've seen the website before, but now that I'm really hearing you talk about it. So you could pay, let me just get this straight. So like I, straight I'm, I'm looking at the most expensive thing you have. So pro 60 tasks, 60 task credits per month, all the tasks per all the plus perks, one-on-one -on -one strategy for $30 a month. Right now, right now, right now. And like, what do I get with that? Sweet. Like, so since we're all on it, okay, interactive activity, guys, if you're listening to this on your phone, go to www.boostcollective.ca and take part in this fun interactive game in which I'm going to show you how Boost Collective runs on the website, assuming it's all the same. So this game, little interactive podcasting may or may not work. So all listeners go to boostcollective.ca and then the, yeah. boom. Guys, the by website. the way, like, okay, Lee, okay, keep going, actually. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. And then so here's let here's a step number one. Let's play this game called uh we'll see if we change it up or not. Cause we're kind of picky, we change things up all the time. So okay. if you see there is uh, a main video of me explaining how it works, sure. then drop a five star for Lizzy the Gifted podcast. All right. Okay. If you see it's both, there's a video. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 15 to 20 tasks, then drop a five star and drop a, a download the video. <laughs> and number three, if the free plan is still in succession, then drop a five star, download the video and join because honestly you need it. So I hope that can, you know, give the fans, uh, the listeners a little bit more of that interaction with the podcast. I mean, guys, if I were you, like, I'm actually pretty, I'm like a little bit shocked right now with all the stuff you're offering. So like, I'm about to, so let me just get this straight. So like when I, when I get that one year free, get one year pass, right? Yes. 60, like all of the plus, like, so does that mean you guys are going to do every single one of these tasks that's on this, that you're talking about here? Like all the tasks that are on the top of the page the make a social media post, blog feature, cover art, music video, Spotify playlist feature. Master your music, like all this, you're going to do all that for $30 a month. This may sound biased, but every single one of those tasks are done so excellently. 
I mean, obviously I'm biased because, you know, like I said, we made it. But yes, every single task will do for you. But however, since you have 10 tasks, it means each task has a different value. So something like creating a social media post is only one task. Something like uh, getting for collaborations, one task. And so some, some bigger tasks, some more complex ones that require more steps, the playlisting ones or one-on-one -on -one strategy calls will take more tasks, obviously. But overall, if you're to look for a consultant or a manager or an assistant to try to take care of all this stuff, good luck. You mad? You'll be paying out your bum. And I say that because what we do is we have like we have tech, we have software that allows us to accomplish and deliver all this. It's not just like, you know, three dudes in the sweat of their brow trying to work day and night getting this done, you know? Sure. Oh, okay, hang on. So re really though, hold up. Still very good. I was on the yearly thing. So let's like, let's say I just want to try you guys out for a month, right? You'd get, um, you get 50, $50 a month. I mean, yeah. Okay. So, so let, let me, let's get some value for, okay, shit. I'm like in transaction mode. Like I'm on the order form, but like we're doing a podcast. So let, let's finish this up. Like, so get, I want, I want to talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about the Spotify stuff. Cause that was the stuff that caught my attention about you. Cause that's personally something I'm kind of interested in. And I think my audience of like, I have a lot of rappers who are in my audience. Um, so talk about like, can you talk, give, give people some tips and tricks, maybe some hacks on Spotify and maybe how to grow your Spotify following and whatnot. Okay. It's actually really good that you mentioned this because I was just writing a blog, like right before we called about this exact topic and the blog is totally free. So if you guys want to check it out, we have our boost blog. I'm sure these will like drop a link, but oh, yeah. let, me, let me open the blog because I can give you like the abstract high level stuff, but if you want more like the ditty great details, which I'm sure your fans would like, uh, let me open the actual blog page and just literally pull that up. Yeah, I want to. I just want to give the people, I guess, give them some good quick tips that maybe they can just something that they can take away to start thinking about. Okay, to get perfect, their minds perfect. going for Spotify stuff. You know, the grander picture thing. All right, yeah. and I know this is gonna be kind of like a very rabbit holey type explanation, but it's all gonna come around. That's all right. Because you know, some the good things they take a little bit of like you know leeway and on programming, reprogramming of your mind to get your head around so you actually right. make it a part of your system. So. When you look at a computer, how does a computer work? I know this sounds kind of weird. So a computer has a bunch of binary digits, one, zero, one, zero, right? Right. And those binary digits assembled create bigger pieces of code. And those pieces of code are compiled to create software. And Shop Spotify itself is a software. So I'm saying that because you need to understand that an algorithm on a computer basis is just a bunch of ones and zeros set to make instructions to complete certain tasks. Same thing with the Instagram algorithm. So that's why if you notice, if more people comment, you're going to get higher reach because a computer does its own little computation and realize input. Oh, you have a lot of comments. Therefore for output, we'll share it to more people. Think of the Spotify algorithm in the same way. So I see a lot of artists, they're trying to, they release like one song a month or they release a lot of songs and there's like ease to trying to promote all of them. I would say if you look at it in a very algorithm, algorithm focused, algorithm centered way, most people find their songs through the Spotify algorithm or playlists. Those are like, it's either one or the other generally. So I'd say if you're an artist that doesn't want to spend a lot of either time or a lot of money, don't put a lot of your eggs in different baskets, rather take all your resources and time and put it into one release and make sure the algorithm can really hit hard. And so ways to make the algorithm actually hit hard. So actionable step-by-step -step ways is of course, when it sees playlists, it's like giving an extra plus, 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 like computers like adding it. Okay. It means it's a good song. And it's all about initial momentum. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like an Instagram post. The initial momentum can kind of help you carry it out. Sure. In the future, you can get on some mega playlist and like let it skyrocket. But what are the chances? What are the practicalities of the thing? Correct. Right. That's why it's all about the initial release. So it's less about the actual Spotify song and more about everything around it such as, are you getting people to pre-save the song? And when you pre-save them, do you, are you collecting their emails for another email campaign in the future? That's right. one aspect. Another aspect is, let's say you have, um, uh, you say you are collecting emails from people from different places and there's content that fits a certain vibe. Like say Tyler, the creator, he makes, he has a very distinct type of content in music. Let's say your music is alt rap, similar to Earl Sweatshirt, Tyler, the creator. 
then you also want to make sure that the algorithm, when there's Tyler Creator, your thing can pop up and how to make your song pop up is literally through playlisting. So I'd say take it from a very broad standard look at it and then see how a computer would compile it to make your thing, uh, I'd say win in terms of how the highest output and that standard. I mean, that's just my, the way my brain naturally works, but I say we need to look at that way because it's weird because as an artist, you don't want to go into full engineering mode. You want to, unless you're an audio engineer, <laughs> right. you want to think about all the, you know, little nitty gritties of the computer. We just have like a basic principle, make this like an actual principle of your promotion that the computer does most of the work. Let the software take care of most of the work. That mm. being said, uh, here are some ways to actually get that done. One of the way, uh, release radar and discover weekly which no you're good you're good i thought i heard something you're good I thought it was gonna have to run or duck or something. <laughs> no no i i thought i heard something you're good <laughs> it's bats <laughs> you're good october season you know yeah right <laughs> so i just want to continue off where i was so trying. wait release ra release radar and discover weekly you said yes release radar and discover weekly in fact we have this youtube video it's totally free because youtube in which we have one of our friends and he explained it exactly how it works down to a t but I'm going to give you like the higher level uh, answer. And I'm sorry to your fans. I won't have all the exact minute details on hand only because. No, it's fine. Uh, well, all the stuff we're getting into is really good. Like, yeah, this is good stuff. Because I mean, even like within Boost Collective, we, we, I kind of take like a more abstract role rather than more technical. But even so, I still want to give you your fans because you're an amazing guy and I really oh, love your you. post. I love everything you do. Thank you. So that being said, it's like, you know, they say a friend of Lizzie is a friend of mine. So I want to get your fans to have the full value as well. Awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So that. let me just open this up. Do you want to, should we try to do a screen share? Uh, is screen that going to do anything? It's nothing. It's nothing too amazing because okay. like I said, the blog isn't fully done. But and next one thing, thing we do, we're definitely going to have a next, like on the, when I invite you to the boost cast, boost, you know, oh, you have a podcast too. It's in self mode right now. Okay. Okay. Oh man, dude. I mean, dude, a hundred percent. You got to get me on there. I'm super oh, down. I'd love to have you on there. Yeah. Well guys, I know one thing, like just while, while Jabari's looking at some stuff, like I know, like, okay. So Instagram's got an algorithm too. Right. And so I've talked to people about if you want to dominate on a certain platform, one of the things you got to do is you have to basically look at every single, I guess you could say feature of that platform. And you got to try to utilize the most important features and each feature has a different, holds a different weight. So on Instagram, somebody liking a post is not as powerful as somebody typing out a DM that's higher intent. So it's the same thing with like Spotify. If somebody adds your song, to their playlist that's higher intent than just clicking the play button because you can just have fake bots click play buttons you know so you guys got to try and, and but see and now you got to say think if you got to think about it okay well what are all the features of spotify you got pre-saves you got add to playlist you got likes um i don't know if i don't know if what else i can oh follow like follow the actual profile of the art so there's all these different things that you want to try to do um you know, and that, that's the way the algorithm works. And I, I've noticed too, I think I've noticed this with a lot of platforms, like with Instagram, you've got, I think it's like the first 10 minutes you post something or something like that, or maybe it's the first hour that in, you post something on Instagram. Instagram will only show it to a certain little bit of your audience. And if it does really well, it'll show it to more people. Guess what? Same thing with TikTok. TikTok, that's what for you pages are. For you pages are just your little test ground. It'll only show your TikTok video to the first 100 to 500 people. If those people interact well with your TikTok, it shows it to a bigger pool of a for you of for you pages and bigger and bigger. Same with Spotify. So Spotify, you got two weeks for your song to pop. If your song does okay in that first two weeks, likes, well, if it gets pre-saves even before the release, that's good. But likes, ads to playlists, all that stuff within the first two weeks, Spotify might throw you on the new music Friday, which would be a dream come true. That's a huge one, or release radar, discover weekly. So that's why Jabari's talking about all the momentum beforehand. Because that first two weeks of your release is probably the most important. Am I kind of in the ballpark? I love the way you explained it, honestly. I think you explained it in very this is why this one leaving Jabari gotta do more work together. He definitely got to. You explain it in such a simple way. And I feel sometimes I get lost in the details and abstraction that it gets way too convoluted and difficult to focus. But the way you explain it is literally so consumable. 
Thank you. No, thank. I just explained it to a, in a way that that I would have understood it. You know what I mean? Like that. That's just that's just the way I would understand it if I was uh, like in younger art. You know, if I, the younger version of me, if I were to explain it to the younger version of me, that's the way. And it's crazy, like those parallels. Like literally, that's how a lot of social media works: TikTok, um, Instagram, and, and and Spotify. Like that's how it works. It's you get like a little window of time right when you release it, and if it does well, it gets shown to more people, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I think, you know. Facebook is pretty much only paid ads. YouTube is, I don't know if that's exact. YouTube is a little different. YouTube is more of like. Weird one. What? I still haven't cracked YouTube and that really aggravates me. <laughs> the YouTube thing, I haven't cracked it either. I mean, I'm not big, but I, I know that like for YouTube, a couple of my videos have done really well. I did like some screen recording videos of me like making beats and explaining mm-hmm. something. And I tried to make the titles like really, really SEO friendly. It was like, like my best video is like how to make a hip hop beat with splice in logic pro X. And that video is like 20,000 for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and I think the other thing too, with the other thing too, with any platform is the more consistent you post or publish onto that platform, the higher your chances of it's like Gary V says, you just get more at bats. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Which yeah, is hard with Spotify though, because you have to make a whole song and making a song is not as easy as making a podcast or a YouTube video. Songs are- Three steps before the actual release. And then after that, a hundred more steps. Right, right. So let, let, me, let me ask you this, because, okay, we kind of explained the Spotify stuff. Now I really want to get into this with you. Like what are like, what are, do you think, what are some important metrics in general, not just Spotify, like just in general with marketing for musicians that you think music, what are things that musicians really should be trying to do to really grow their career? All right. Some things that musicians are really trying to grow their career. Um, one thing that I've noticed musicians don't dig deep enough in is repetition. And let me get, let me say a little bit more to that because I mean, that's like the most loaded term of all time, you know? such a loaded term, you can see that like an 1800 musket, you know? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, if something works, like let's say you put out a piece of content or you put out a song and you get positive feedback, then I'd say use that feedback and then take what works and use that in the next one. And so I find that a lot of musicians in the face of trying to find an artistic vision or experiment, they kind of do a bunch of different things. When out of the 10 things, maybe two of it really are stellar work and it really shows because the market seems to like it. They're not repeating the same thing over and over. And I find that if they were to just simply look in their history, just go go on, open their phone, iPhone, Android, whatever it is, please be an iPhone, go on Instagram, check their insights, see which posts did well. And rather than looking at, okay, this post, I posted this time, this time, this time, this time, because the algorithm is only half the battle. Half of it is actual content quality. Yes. So I'd say what qualitatively, so basically what intrinsically made that content really good, recreate it from scratch. And then next thing you'll know, change it a little bit so that you know people don't think it's the same thing over. Give it a different type of value proposition, which mm-hmm. we can go into depth of that. What I'm saying is give it a different angle, a different style. And the fun part, is that's what marketing is finding what works and what doesn't and then repeating it but adding your own touch to it yeah assuming that they like it you know yeah and and another thing i'm going to add to that is you kind of need the tough thing is like let's say you're just starting out you know and you put out one song and you don't really have that big of an audience you can't sit there and say that song didn't get a million views that means it didn't work i have to try something else it's like dude well, you don't have a big enough pool and and i and i say this in a very practical context, I'm in the um, the MIDI money group, you know, that Legion and Anno Domini started. And in Man, the Facebook- that's, that's amazing. I love, I love that. Yeah, it's a great group. I just got to say, you know, shout out to Gabe. He's been doing so much work and he's honestly, I won't lie, he's paved the way for a lot of us. So I just want to like, I don't know if he's listening, but if you are, kudos to you. Just know Jabari and Blues Collective, we love what you do and we check you out all the time. What are our inspirations? Now yeah. back to Elise's amazing, gratuitous words. <laughs> They're hilarious. So, so in the group, in the group, there's a lot of producers at all different levels. Um, and a lot of producers, you know, it's very open group. So a lot of us post our results or what we're going through and say, hey guys, can anyone offer some insights? It usually, you usually get something back, but 
it's funny because a lot of people will just be like, they'll post a screenshot of their click funnels, like their, their stats. And they'll be like, Oh guys, I don't understand why I'm getting such a low opt-in rate. And like, nobody's buying. They will literally not even have had a hundred people hit the landing page. They'll have a, had like 80 people hit their landing page and they'll have like a 20% conversion. I'm like, dude, you've got to get like at least a thousand people on there first before you can even. Wait, bro. I don't mean to cut you off. I know it's rude, but so we have this app. Have you ever used Instacart? No. It's this cool little app. Instacart, please sponsor me. See if you hear this, please. please. <laughs> Instacart. Instacart is this really cool app in which, oh man, I want to get something, but I live in a big city and cars are too expensive. All my city musicians can relate, especially from New York. You know how crazy it can be to try to get from place A to place B. Take the metro, grab the food, bag breaks, apple rolls down the train. You can't get it. Next thing you know, everyone's walking around. It's a mess. Or you live in LA, which is also a big city, but traffic, there's a joke. You can't get nowhere. It's going to take you five years to get one kilometer or one meter, one mile away. That's why there's an app called Instacart in which you can have somebody deliver your groceries to you. And the best part yet is the delivery free is less than $6. All right. you do is go on the website, you select what it is. Beep. Next thing you know, they're going to come to your door within two hours with all your groceries and no margin, just a flat fee and you're good. And so my, my Instacart literally just came in. So I need to like run down to the condo lobby, grab it and I'll be back. In like two oh minutes. my God. That's so okay. I got you. I'll pause the recording. <laughs> So we had to have a quick pause there. Um, we had a little technical difficulty, so we had to, we had a quick pause it up. But here's what I want to say to you guys. So, so what 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 Jabari's got going on with Boost Collective? Like I've been checking him out for a long time. I don't know why I wasn't on the website more, like before this, because I just was. I've, I've checked out the website a lot, and um, you know, I actually just paid for the mo whatever the most expensive membership is like I just paid for it um before this episode and I like I'm pretty shocked with everything that you've got going on meaning like I'm just gonna go through really quick like the stuff you have going on is pretty ridiculous in a good way for artists uh and I really want to you know I will say that I want to make sure that it actually ends up working because it looks like it's a lot um how I'm wondering, so, so, so for those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, all you have to do is go to boostcollective.ca and it's, I mean, it's almost has this agency vibe. It's kind of like an agency where you, it's a done for you service where you guys handle like all of the marketing stuff for an artist. I mean, like literally every, like even beats, it's crazy. Like you're even fine collabs get a beat and master the song and then find the block. It's great. Cause they have it all. They have it all covered. Um, they have it all covered into different phases, like find blogs, create cover art, make a banner, emails, social media posts, pitch to local gigs, create a download gate, advertise music blog. I mean, it's like, it's all these different things that like you really do have to do as an artist that, it's just too hard to do as an artist. It's too, it's too hard to do it all. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I'll even Jabari, just so for your reference, like where I'm at right now is like, I all, obviously I'm an artist. That's, that's where I started. I started producing for myself. And then I was like, man, like it is just so difficult to like make headway as just an artist. And the end goal is the end goal is so far out there to make a real living. And I was like, well, what if I start making money as a producer? So I got into Gabe uh, Legion Beats and Anno Domini's program, MIDI Money. And I just start for any producer that wants to start. Gabe Killinger, he's kind of, just start with him. And I think you'll save yourself weeks, months, even years of time. No question. Yeah. And so I like got into their program and pretty immediately I started seeing results with at least my email list and some revenue. And then I've basically been in it for a year. I've done at least 10 different iterations of my sales funnel and I've started seeing profit and I have other things going on where I coach artists. So I just got a lot of shit going on because my focus is getting money, honestly, and providing mm -hmm. value in a different way than providing value as an artist. But I'm not trying to give up on being an artist. Like that's what I want to do, mm -hmm. but it's too much. It's too much. If I'm going to, you know, okay, I'm, slight gem. Like I was just with Gabe yesterday from the Perfect. studio takeover. And, yeah. 
And I spent, dude, I literally spent four hours with him in the same room, sitting with him in his studio. We talked like just, and it, I had to record an hour and a half on my phone. I'm the, I, it's so hard to remember everything. But yeah, one yeah, of, keep talking and I'm going to get so jealous. I'm going to have to end the call and cry myself to sleep. Right? Oh, no, no. Right. Right. I know. And I'm not, yeah, I know. <laughs> but one of the things, around, you know, I'm happy for you. You know, no, no, no. I, 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 yeah. Right. I feel it. Thank you. No, I appreciate it's it. It's a great moment. It's a great moment to be able to meet the minds of like people that have been in the industry for such a long time and done so much. You know? Crazy. Yeah. No, but I, I want to hear more. What you're and doing. I want to give the gems to people. Like I'm going to have to drip the gems out. Cause I like did a podcast yesterday and I was like, dude, I can't even remember everything. So I'm going to go back, listen to the audio recording and look at my notes and I'll drip out as much of the value throughout the rest of my career as I can. You know, it's too hard to try to pack it all into one episode though. But one yeah. of the things he talked about was, with dividing up your time. There's things that are strategic and things that are tactical. Okay. Strategic things are things that you want to do that you as the entrepreneur or artist or producer, you should do. So, and that's different for everybody, right? So at the beginning of your career, um, if you're an artist, literally every single task is strategic. Okay. Tactical is something where you don't necessarily have to do it. You could hire out and have somebody else do it. Okay. Oh, okay. Outsourcing. And he's like, you, and, and that's going to change. He's like, so he, he told me when he first started Facebook advertising was strategic. He did it, but now Facebook advertising is tactical. He hires out for that. So it changes, right? That's why he builds a team. So for me, I have put out a lot of music. Like I've been putting out music consistently for 10 years. So obviously making a song is still for me strategic. Plus now I make my beats, but making cover art, paid ads, pitching to Spotify playlists, all that stuff to me isn't strategic because it's all this extra work that isn't making me money. Yeah, it doesn't move I, the boat any faster. No. And so for me right now, what's strategic is like making a song, but what's also st strategic is uh, building Facebook ads for my beat business or doing sales calls for people that I might be coaching. That's mm -hmm. strategic, but like, tactical stuff every single thing on your website that you offer that's all tactical that i need help with so that's why i'm and, I, and i'm saying this to you to, to to you jabari but also to the audience listening basically what jabari is doing is he is providing you all of the tactical stuff that is and they're doing it for you for like oh i'd like to say one more time you know the credit needs to go out towards damien and ronan you know because they've literally piece by piece built it from grounds end. Of course, I was helping them along the way, but they're the true masterminds of the operation. Yes. So and the whole post collective team. Credit to everybody. So and 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 for not that expensive. Like in my opinion. To, like we tried it in the past doing some very targeted stuff, and it was expensive because in reality, if you want to have more strategic, bigger, higher level things that you want us to take care of, you know, time is time's always passing. So any manager you get, and I'm not trying to disparage managers because managers do phenomenal jobs, but it's like, they're going to take 20% of what you make and it's going to be expensive in the first place to onboard them and everything. So we thought as a music industry, the bar of entry gets lower and lower. Also, conversely, we want to make sure everybody can get a chance to get some value. I, I would, I would, I would, here's, here's what I'll say though. I'm going to give you some honest feedback. I think that once you break an artist, like if your methods breaks an artist, you have to charge more after that. Because oh. what you're doing is there's no chance that I, I don't see, like, let's say, let's say you, you and I, we work together and then you break me. Let's say that somehow you blow up my songs. And I start showing hella people Booze Collective. You're not going to be able to keep up with the amount of people that oh, me definitely. or any other, you know what I mean? You guys are going to have to charge unless you got a bigger team. And even then, bro, I'm, I'm saying the point is the potential of what you have going on is really, 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 really high. And for the price you're charging people, like, I'm like, I don't know. Hopefully you guys are able to do it because it's a lot of stuff. The interesting element is what we're always considering is we would not have charged it at this level if it was 18 months ago. Hmm. We, of course, yeah, it's a lot of work, you know, like it's not easy to doing all this stuff, but with the rise and I'm not going to say fall with the rise and dip of TikTok, we realize things aren't super static. It's so dynamic. Things are moving everywhere. So we'd rather 
have a bunch of people come in and we want to show them that we're here for them, like building that trust first before the music industry changes again in the next 18 months. Right. And I'm sure you can kind of relate in this one, right? Sometimes it's better to the long term to take a temporary loss to see what can happen in the future. And that's like, that's like more higher level stuff. I don't want to get too deep in, but yeah, no, it's a, listen, check I, this out, right? Oh, go, go. The definition of winning isn't who has the most metric. It's not even about vanity metrics, like likes and comments and whatever. The definition of winning is ultimately your fan base because they're the ones that are going to be with you till the end. So a lot of people, they're always optimizing for, I want to get, you know, more followers because I can have 20K. But what does 20K mean? There's always going to be somebody 200K, somebody better than you. But thing is with your fan, nobody can take that away from you. That's mm -hmm. something that's, it's the most beautiful thing about the music industry because you've impacted somebody's life for the better. So I'd say don't optimize towards, you know, vanity metrics, likes, comments, as even like money, of course we need money, but like money is just a means to an end. Always try to make sure that you can make the best environment for your fans or customers or whatever, producer, artist, engineer, vocalist, ghostwriter, everything. That's like what we believe and we try to make us our, one of our, our core values, fans first. Right. And I, and I think like, based on what you're saying, you know, I've talked about that a bunch of times and I just talked about that on uh, a few days ago on my pod where I was talking about like why I personally don't care about my number of Instagram followers, like why I don't care about growing. Cause I'm like, cool. Once I get to 20 K somebody's going to look at my account. Like I'll be like that sick 20 K, but somebody's going to look at my account and be like, well, it ain't 50 K. You know? <laughs> and then someone's going to be like, and 50 K is going to look hella sick. 50 K is like, Oh, 50 K. And in your head, you're like, I have 50 K. That means I'm legit. Someone's going to look at your account and go, well, it ain't a hundred K. She's just going to keep hard. going and keep like, you'll look at a guy or a girl with a million followers and be like, that's, I mean, if you really think that's like a lot, but somebody's looking at that going, it ain't five mil always. And it's just like, it's a stupid, what are you even chasing? It's such a dumb, like, it's so dumb. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to say another gem from being with Gabe, like me and him both, we, we both see the lack of value in content on Instagram. Like Instagram content's not valuable. Dude, it's, it's, it's horrific, bro. It's horrific. It's bad. And he even said, cause he's got a, and he's got a team, you know, he has a guy who does all the Instagram posting for him and makes the content. And he's like, yeah, we tried doing uh, posting five to seven days a week and just didn't make a difference in our business at all. And I was like, Oh shit. Okay. This is coming from a guy who's running two different million dollar businesses. So if he says that posting on Instagram mm -hmm. seven days a week, isn't making a difference, it's probably not something we should be going into. You know, I think posting is great, but we, we both agreed. That's why he started a podcast, by the way. It's why he started. I'd be, to the, I'd be to the third list. All right. I agree too. I'm the third guy. Yeah. Just oh, you know. for sure. I think a lot of people, and, and we both talked about the fact that YouTube is, that's where you post content. Like YouTube's where you post content. Instagram's great for networking though. And that's how you and I got connected was, was mm -hmm. we really, you got to look at your content different. It's not that content is completely like, don't ever post on Instagram. It's not that it's more of, what are you trying to get out of your content? Like if you're just trying to get a bunch of likes, comments and hack the algorithm, trust me, likes, comments, shares does not convert always to opt-ins and dollars. So what are you doing with it? So now, now I see Jabari and Boost Collective. Now the content is like this one like and comment of Lizzy the Gifted has now turned into a podcast interview and you just got a customer out of one like. So Woo! it's like, is it really worth it for you to go? I got to get to 20 K. It's like, not really though. It's more about like, what's your content actually doing for you? Like, is it working mm -hmm. for you? Cause, th cause now, cause then we're just going to get into clout chasing. And it's like, what do we read? And trends only come and go. So if you're trying to follow the trends then sure, you're going to find some times are good. Then when the times are bad, when you see yourself going from, you know, 300,000 weekly uh, in, in, uh, impressions to only 100,000, I personally went through that and honestly, that was pain. That was, it was pain having to get like 300% less. You're like, Oh, what am I doing wrong? What am I? Then it comes a point you realize, Hmm, because it's a realization. That's the part that I wish somebody would have told us. Like, it's not just, even though you get it. Oh yeah. Don't trade followers back in your mind. The little hamster is going to be like, all right, more followers, more followers. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Brown, you know, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. 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 Sure. What do you say? More followers, more followers. You have to viscerally, understand by jumping into it that 
it's not actually as good as you think it is. That's why every two seconds, you're gonna find a brand new, uh, you know, whatever tips account. That's why I kind of went more towards the reels function and less towards the, you know, basic value. And sure, there's like, there's two sides to it. Some people can say, dude, I don't know. I don't feel like this is helpful. Other guys are like, dude, this is funny as heck. So it's like, the question is, what are we optimizing for? At the end of the day, like you said, YouTube is great for like those actual conversions. But Instagram, when it comes to branding, it's savant. You can reach so much people that then is a leg into your other products. Then is a leg into your other stuff. So is it, do you need to follow the algorithm down to a T, send a rhyme, reminder to wake up at like 12 a.m. so that you can do all this, that, this, that? Not totally necessary unless your goal calls for it. And I'm so happy that you mentioned that because you said it in such a plain way that I don't think I would have been able to say it. Right. And, and well, I appreciate that. And it, it, just, it also just came from proof with Legion. And he built both of his businesses on paid ads. He built them on paid ads. And I'm not saying that you should completely rely on paid ads. That's not what I'm saying. But I've just asked him, like, the other thing, though, that I, ta- that I did talk to him about, and I was pretty straight with him, was it's not like... Hey, make he, sure you don't say something that you're not supposed to. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, whatever. But it's, it's, he hasn't... I talked to him about it because he does his podcast. It's looking like about once a week. He hasn't mm-hmm. done a piece of content every day. So he did Instagram content once a day, but I said, but yeah, but Gabe, what if you did a YouTube video every day? It's like, he just can't, that's just not something he's going to wrap his head around. He does. I actually don't think he needs to because he cracked the code a different way. But so mm, if I'm, a million ways. yeah, like there's a different way to do everything. Like I'm not saying he's doing something wrong because he's not obviously like he's Evidently doing something he's right. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I was clear with him saying that, but I want other people to listen to this and not think, okay, screw content. It's like, no, no, don't pick the right content. Instagram content isn't, isn't, that's not the content that's going to make you money. The Let me just say that, something, Lizzie. Please go. I'm so excited for this podcast to be out. And dude, you got to send me like the track masters so that I can add my little effects and like do some stuff with it. Because this podcast alone has given you and I such a strong like base and so much gems that I just, I know my following and like people that check boots are gonna love it. And I'm so excited to like, you know, add animations, your little character sprite and me and like, it's gonna be so much fun. I'm just, th- that's what it's all about fun at the end of the day. All right, yeah. Jadabari, TNS. No, 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 I, I was just saying like, it, it, I was just saying like guys, like Instagram content, it's crazy. Cause like not too long ago, I was preaching like, go all in on Instagram, but now I'm looking at it. I'm like, no dude, Instagram content is not the way to go. It's YouTube, but, but I will say that Outreach on Instagram is the best because you can't network on YouTube. You can network on IG though. That's where you look at Instagram as powerful. And uh, tell me what you think of this. Like if you vibe with this or not, but I, I was talking to one of my, uh, he was actually one of my coaching clients, but now he's like a really good friend of mine. He was like, dude, basically you just need to like put up a perception on Instagram. Like Instagram is like, just make it look like you're cool or make it look like something. And he told me, you got to stop talking about the struggle so much, you got to start showing people how happy you are because you're not a baller and you don't have hella money, but you do have this certain level of happiness and like just show something super positive and show that you're cool. And like people will look at you and take you more seriously. And I'm, I've been doing that and it helps. What do you vibe with that? Or what, what's your thoughts on that? One, the vibes never end baby. <laughs> and two, that's, you literally said it. And I know people, all right, please go back to exactly one and a half minutes and replay that three times. Play, go back, go back, third time. All right, we're here. The reason I say that is because I want you to ingrain that into your mind because that alone will set up your entire account for success. It's all about the lifestyle. It's about the lifestyle. They come for the, they come for whatever reason they stay for the lifestyle. And what's a better way to make somebody resonate with you if they see themselves in you. So if you have this type of like energy vibe music, it's like ex excitation. They have this amazing, like, I wouldn't say lifestyle, but they have this amazing persona to them that they're reaching out. Um, the weekend, his is more like, Oh, lover boy, kind of every, every guy has got his heart broken was definitely singing, you know, the weekend under his covers of the bed, you know, I they may not all admit it, but they're all doing it. Right. <laughs> and I think Lizzie said is perfect. You know, it's all about that. And 
after this thing's over, if you can like give me like the dude, if he's like a, you know, uh, guy on Instagram, I want to follow them because that's some really good advice. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's just, it's just through trial and error that I learned all this. I've been on Instagram for, uh, I think like not 10 or nine, nine or 10 years. I don't know. I've been on it for a long time. And so I've just, you know, and it's not just, it's not really just about Instagram. It's more of like, um, this would be like kind of the last thing that I'm going to ask you to wrap us up. But like, I just don't, I want artists and producers too. Like this is for literally anybody. You got to stop looking at, it's hard because it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You got to, you, you want to kind of focus on one thing at a time. You want to have a certain level of focus, but you got to make sure that what you're focusing on is actually going to yield you the right results. Like if you get too focused on Instagram, like just, I just want everyone to understand that, that Instagram is, is not going to be the most, I personally don't think it is. I've seen other people say Instagram's amazing, but it all depends on how you use it. And you got to realize the cap of success where you can go. I'm all about that now. The cap of like the idea, right? Like if you make a song, just the idea of the song, there might be a certain cap to it. Like if it's a dope underground rap song, it's not going to have that high likeliness of being a hip hop song. But if you make a song that sounds like a pop song, sounds like a dance song, you got a higher ceiling. So you guys got to look at the ceiling of Instagram and the ceiling of YouTube. YouTube has a way higher ceiling because you can do more with the content, right? Instagram ceiling is lower, but it's higher with the networking. So use it for networking. LinkedIn doesn't, there's different things like LinkedIn's paid advertising platform. Yeah. And say if you're LinkedIn and you want to get in contact with reputable engineers or um, it's more of like the B2B style, but at the same time, some things LinkedIn does, it gives you based on units of effort put in the unit of output can way outsource both Instagram and YouTube. Right. So, I mean, you guys just got to look at it like that. All right. So after that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, so no, to wrap it up, like, pl- like we've kind of plugged your website and stuff, but just kind of that last final, like final words and just plug whatever you want, where people can find you and the best place to get in contact with you. All right. Perfect. Um, sadly, I know that 5% of the audience is going to be sad when I say that under, underground, uh, underwater basketball event is not going to become a thing anytime soon. <laughs> That's funny. If you're listening, I really urge you to get the free membership because depending on the dynamics of the music industry, as we know, it changes every 18 months. It may not be free. And if you mess up, then you may not get another chance. Right. That's all I got to say. You know, also, uh, you know, one more time, I got to say shout out to uh, Gabe. Damn, Gabe, to hear this and be like, he's going to feel great because we're shouting out so many times because yeah. he's really paved the way. So I, if I'm going to give somebody that you need to go check out next, Obviously, it's going to be easy to gifted, but also make sure you check out some Gabe stuff because he has a bunch of great stuff. And I know a lot of people, they, uh, they don't look towards the big guy. They have like a type of a hint of skepticism towards the ones that have, you know, quote unquote made it, which I'd say there's a reason they got that stage. So follow them. And if you can, you know, a little bit of that can rub off on you, then you'll be way better than had you not. Right. Last thing yeah. I wanted. Right. So guys, so I would say go check out, go to Boost Collective dot ca to check out the website and if you want to just kind of check out a little bit more of what boost collective has going on all you have to do is go to instagram boost collective that's it boost collective there's no dots dashes or underscores or numbers very easy to find dope content with some value and some entertainment um boost collective is definitely lazy the gifted certified i'll tell you that so if you like what i'm doing go check them out um and of course if you guys got any value from the episode leave me a rating leave me a review subscribe to the pod Share with a friend, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again tomorrow. Peace.